Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus. In this video I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the more than 130 brush presets that come pre-packaged with Krita 4. Now I'm not going to go into detail about what each brush preset does because exploring the ridiculous variety of brush presets is one of the most fun things you can do when you first start using Krita. Instead, I'll just help you navigate the brush presets docker and understand how the presets are organized. In Krita 4's default layout, which you can get back to by clicking the workspaces icon in the top right and selecting default, the brush presets docker appears in the bottom right here. You can also get it from this four square button at the top, which is identical. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to pull it out just to make it a little easier to scroll through the brush presets. In this thumbnail view, you can see the name of your current brush preset in the bottom left here, or you can right click over the icon and it'll show you the name. When I say right click, I'm actually clicking the upper button on my pen stylus, so that might be different for you. You can change the size of the icons from the dockers menu up here using this slider, and you can switch to a detail view, which I'm gonna use here. In the detail view, you can see a number beside the icon and that number is the current size of your brush. See there 160 as I change the size of my brush. Beside the brush size, you'll see the brush presets full name there. And yes, those letters are a part of the preset names. Because the brushes are sorted alphabetically, that allows the brushes to be grouped together. For example, at the top here in the A's, you can see these are all the erasers, and the B's are all basic brushes, and when you get into the C's, you get some pencils, and so on. When using a brush preset, if you change any of the brush's settings, for example, size, or opacity, or even turning on eraser mode, you'll notice a little edited icon appear in the presets thumbnail. You can get a brush presets defaults back by hitting this reload button right here, and then you'll be back to the brush's defaults. The brush presets will all reset to their defaults as well when you restart Krita. Other than the basic one brush, I believe every other brush has some sort of pressure dynamic. I'm going to clear my canvas with the delete key and with the basic two opacity brush you can see here as I slowly add more pressure to my stroke that the brush gets darker and darker. If you don't see obvious changes in your brush with pressure and instead it looks more like you're drawing with a mouse like this then you'll need to figure out what's wrong with your tablet. The two biggest tips I can provide you is make sure your tablet is plugged in before you start Krita, so you may need to restart Krita. And make sure you have the latest drivers installed for whatever make and model of tablet you have. Get them from the tablet manufacturer's website. The basic flow brush does something similar to the opacity brush, but this time it affects the transparency of every single individual dab of paint that is added instead of the whole stroke like this brush. So you get a different effect when the stroke overlaps itself. After the basic brushes, we have some pencils. These presets tend to emulate the effect of pencil on paper. They all have a thin brush that uses a paper-like texture. Here you'll notice a little icon on Pencil Tilted's thumbnail. These arrows mean that the brush has some sort of rotation dynamic. In this case, the brush will change slightly based on the vertical angle your pen makes with the tablet. So here I am at 90 degrees straight up and down and as I slowly tilt my pen the brush gets slightly larger and larger. This is known as tilt elevation. The stroke will also rotate as I rotate my hand on the canvas horizontally like this. Interestingly this brush seems to be backwards to how I would expect a real pencil to behave. I can fix that by editing the brush's settings here and changing the rotation from 180 to zero, effectively flipping the texture. And now this is what I would expect based on how my hand is on my tablet. If you're interested in learning more about editing brushes and making your own brush presets, my Krita Meets Bob Ross tutorial series is pretty much a course on editing and making brush presets. Continuing on, we have section D here, which has some inks for black and white illustration or comic artists. There are a few markers there and then we get down into some dry painting brushes. There are three groups of brushes that fall into the dry painting category. These bristle brushes, then some dry brushes, and finally some chalk brushes. These dry brushes don't interact with paint that is 
already on the canvas. They just paint right on top of whatever's already there. That's probably not surprising, but wait till we get to the wet brushes. The bristles I'll paint using a texture mask to appear like bristles instead of just a circle or oval. If you crank up the brush size and dab onto the canvas, you can see what that texture mask looks like for each of the brushes. The dry brushes use what's called an animated mask. So instead of using the same mask shape for every blob of paint they apply, it has several different textures that it cycles through or randomly rotates through depending on how the brush was set up. The last group of dry brushes focus on adding the type of texture you would obtain by using a dry tool such as chalk, charcoal, or pastel and rubbing them on textured paper. For example, the chalk details brush, you can see it's revealing a pattern of the substrate you're painting on and even painting over top of that pattern leaves the pattern intact. The wet family of brushes is wet in a sense that they interact with colors that are already on the canvas. It triggers the feeling of having wet artwork and mixing colors at the same time. Here we see our second little icon indicator, these little water droplets. This means the preset uses some sort of blending and will interact in some way with paint already on your canvas, or sometimes even just within its own stroke. Notice how these icons all show white and purple in the sample brush stroke. The white indicates the blending aspect of the brush. And you can see here at low pressure, it's only blending. And the purple indicates that it also will apply its own paint. And in this case, the brush will apply paint once I start adding more pressure. Simulating real watercolors is highly complex. So these brushes only partially simulate the watercolor texture. Don't expect crazy pigment diffusion because these brushes are not able to do that, but they're still pretty cool. There is a second batch of watercolor brushes here with a blending indicator. And in these cases, you can also see the white and colored paint indicating that they will both blend and apply new paint as well. The blender brushes, you can see their sample stroke is only white and they don't apply any new paint at all. They only affect paint already on the canvas and by default only on the layer you're currently painting on. Don't expect them to do anything on a blank canvas. All these presets give a different result for how they smudge and smear. I'm going to skip over most of these more advanced brush presets. Perhaps I'll cover them in another video. However, there are a few more I'd like to talk about. One of them here are the pixel brushes, which are handy. I'm going to zoom in with the plus key. These are handy if you want to have pixel perfect precision and you don't want to get the anti-aliasing that maybe a normal brush would have like this. Further down in the Y group here, you have some texture brushes, which will apply a texture such as sponges or spray paint and some other cool things as well. Further down, finally, we have in the Z category some stamps, which are very similar in applying a, a mask, but this time it's a little more recognizable. So for example, you might stamp some grass or some hearts. The final thing I want to show you here is at the bottom, if you're looking for a specific brush, you can search for it using the bottom here. And you can also clear your search and at the very top, the many of the brushes have been organized into tags, into categ tag categories, and you can select them with that. There seems to be a little bug here, which I run into all the time that 
the thumbnails get a little weird when I switch. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I might just have to get this piece of art printed and put on my wall.